In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a dollar cost average strategy on the Jupiter Swap. The DCA strategy allows you to set up automated buy orders over your specified time period. You can also choose a price range where you'd like these purchases to take place. And if price goes above or below that specified range, the dollar cost average strategy will stop purchasing crypto. And in this tutorial, I'm going to go over how to set this up step by step. This video is not financial advice and is for educational purposes only. Always do your own research before ever using a decentralized swap, including Jupiter Swap. Let's get into the video. Once you get to the Jupiter Swap, the first obvious step is to connect a wallet. You can do that by clicking right here on Connect Wallet, or we can come up here, top right hand side of the screen, and click on Connect Wallet. Then you'll get this window here, and there are a variety of different wallets that you can connect to the platform. If you don't see them automatically in this pop-up window, just click right here on More Wallets. And as you can see, there's plenty of different wallets that you can connect to this platform. Simply click on the wallet that you wish to connect. For this tutorial, I'll be using the Phantom Wallet, so I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And now my wallet is connected to Jupiter. Now if it's your first time connecting a wallet to the platform, your wallet's going to drop down top right hand side of the screen, and you're going to have to sign authorization to connect the wallet to the Jupiter Swap. So you'd simply click confirm inside your wallet to connect it to the swap. Once your wallet is successfully connected, you'll be able to see your wallet address top right hand side of the screen. Mine's behind a black box. Now, if you don't have a hot wallet already, I do have step-by-step -step beginner tutorials for Phantom Wallet, for MetaMask, as well as Trust Wallet. And in those videos, I go through how to set up a wallet, how to use the wallet and do a variety of different things with the wallets. So what I'll do is I'll leave a link to those beginner tutorials in the description down below for anyone that might find that helpful. So now that I'm connected to Jupiter, I'm ready to set up a DCA strategy, which stands for dollar cost averaging. So to get this done, we're going to come over here, click on spot, then click here on DCA. Next, choose the asset that you wish to swap by clicking right here. So in my case where it says USDT, then choose a crypto that you wish to use for your dollar cost averaging. You'll be able to see your wallet balances inside this drop down, so you can click on a token that you wish to use. And alternatively, you can search for one in the search bar up above. I have a small amount of Tether in this burner wallet, so I'll go ahead and demonstrate with that. So I'm gonna click on my Tether balance. So now I'm set up to allocate my Tether to buy some Solana. So if you wanna choose a different crypto that you wish to allocate to, just give this a click. So in my case where it says Sol, and then choose a crypto that you wish to purchase for your dollar cost average strategy. You can select it from this drop down menu here, or you can search for it in the search bar up above. I'm perfectly fine demonstrating with Solana, so I'll go ahead and click on my Solana balance. So now I'm configured to dollar cost average my Tether into Solana. Next, we need to choose how much of the asset we wish to spend in total throughout the process of our dollar cost averaging. You'll be able to see your available balance right here so you'll know exactly what you're working with. So let's just imagine that I want to ultimately spend 30 Tether over the course of this dollar cost averaging strategy. Now we need to choose how often we wish to have our orders executed. And we can do that right down here. So you can see this is currently set to every minute. So let's go ahead and click here on minute. Now as you can see, there's other timelines you can use as well. You can do a buy every hour, every day, every week, or every month. For this demonstration, I'll select day. So now I need to choose how many orders I wish to use to spend a total of 30 Tether on Solana. So I'm going to come over to this box here. And for this demonstration, I'll do three orders. So this means that every day, Jupiter is automatically going to spend 10 Tether on Solana. That's because I'm spending a total of 30 Tether spaced out over three orders. So at this point here, if I was happy with this, I could come down here and click on start DCA. And no matter what the price of Solana is, every day Jupiter Swap is going to buy me some Solana over the course of the next three days. So three orders in total. Now we can take this a step further by setting a minimum price as well as a maximum price. And what this gives us the ability to do is to choose a price range that we deem acceptable. So if the price of the asset goes outside of the range that we wish to purchase in, Jupiter Swap will automatically stop the dollar cost average strategy. So for example, let's head on over here to the chart. And let's imagine that we like the price of Solana here and that we're perfectly happy starting the dollar cost average strategy. 
But maybe I'm thinking to myself, you know what? If Solana gets above this pivot right here, then maybe I wanna stop dollar cost averaging because it's leaving the buy zone. And perhaps I'm looking at these wicks right here and I'm thinking to myself, if Solana starts getting below those wicks right there, then maybe I wanna pause my dollar cost averaging strategy because maybe at that point I'm thinking to myself, maybe Solana is going to go lower. So what I'll do for this demonstration is I'll go ahead and mark this range out. So we'll come over here to the drawing tools. If you don't see yours, there's a little arrow here. You'll see if I click this, I can hide the drawing tools. If I click it again, it reveals the drawing tools. And I'm gonna come up here to the trend line and click on this little triangle right here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and grab a horizontal line. I'm gonna come back to the chart. I'm gonna go ahead and mark this pivot right here like so. Now I'll come back over to the drawing tools, grab another horizontal. And I'm gonna go ahead and mark these wicks right here. Now I can see that Solana is inside of a range here. And maybe I want this range to be my dollar cost average range. So as long as Solana is trading between these two horizontals, I'm happy to allow Jupiter to execute an order every day for 10 Tether into Solana. So now that I've put those horizontals on the chart, I can now see price points on the Y axis of the chart that correlates to those horizontals. So for the bottom horizontal, I can see 122.36. So I'm gonna come down here to minimum price. I'm gonna type that in, 122.36. Now I'll come back to the chart. I can see the top horizontal coming in at 162.05. So we'll come over here to max price. And I'll go 162.05. So now I have a little bit of control over the dollar cost averaging strategy. So long as the price of Solana stays between these two price points, Jupiter Swap is going to be executing a buy order for me for a total of three orders over the next three days. So this looks good to me. So I'm gonna come down here and click on start DCA. Now I'm gonna come back up to the wallet. I can see the total of 30 tether that I wish to use the dollar cost average right here. I can see the network fee to get this done. So in my case, that's not point not 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 one Solana, which is a very small amount of Solana. Remember, when you're using a hot wallet on a decentralized exchange, the network fees are always paid for out of the native token for the network that you're using. So in my case here, I'm using the Solana network inside a phantom wallet. So my network fee is going to be paid out of my Solana balance that I hold inside the wallet. So make sure to have some of the native token inside your wallet to cover the fees. And I cover all this in more detail in my Phantom Wallet step-by-step -step beginner tutorial, as well as in my MetaMask tutorial and Trust Wallet tutorial. So if this is still relatively new to you and you wanna learn more about that, feel free to check out those videos, links in the description down below. So this looks good to me. I'm gonna come down here and click on confirm. Now I've activated the dollar cost average strategy and we can see it now below the chart. So if we go ahead and give this a click, it'll expand and now we can see the details of this dollar cost average strategy. You can see that my first order has already gone through. You can see that on the progress bar right here. And you can see that I have 20 tether remaining from the dollar cost average strategy. So as long as Solana stays between these two horizontals, this DCA strategy will keep activating. So tomorrow there'll be another purchase of $10 worth of Solana, so long as price doesn't get below this horizontal here or above this horizontal here. If we come down a little further here, you can see right here, number of orders left is two. We can see the interval that we selected right here, so every day. And I can see right here, the next order is going to execute on September 2nd at 1354. Now, if at any point you wanna manually cancel your dollar cost average strategy, you can come down here where it says close and withdraw. So I'll go ahead and click on that. The wallet's going to drop down. You can see right here that 20 USDT will be returned to my available wallet balance, as well as a small amount of Solana right here as well. And of course, there'll be a network fee for this. Again, that's a really small fee. Looks fine to me. So I'm gonna come down here and click on confirm. Now I just shut down the remainder of my dollar cost average strategy. Of course, my first order of three went through, so I did buy some Solana, but my next two orders were canceled, and now that Tether has now been put back to my available balance inside my Phantom Wallet. And there you have it. That's how you can set up a DCA strategy on JupyterSwap. If you got some value out of that, don't forget to leave me a like and hit subscribe for future content. Also, feel free to check out my JupyterSwap tutorials, which I've put together in a playlist on my YouTube channel. Thanks so much for coming by and checking out this video. Looking forward to seeing you in the next one. And until I do, have yourself a powerful day.